You've heard the old adage, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Well, a man from Rock Hill says he almost gave thousands of dollars away before becoming suspicious of an exchange to unload his timeshare. Ron Nickerson is a truck driver, and he's constantly on the road. So he caught up via Zoom to talk about the timeshare that he and his wife, Lori, bought 10 years ago. Well, I think it was 2015 we decided that we wanted to out of this thing. They had it listed for $22,000. They never got a bite until earlier this year. And they offered me actually twenty two five for it. I said, yeah, I'm interested in selling. And I usually don't answer those calls. Because the assumed buyer was out of Mexico, the so-called broker told him he needed to pay $4,400 first. Ron said, oh, they're going to reimburse us for the taxes. As you saw, the guarantee was there and everything. And all I had to do is wire the money and I could get it in 24 hours. Tom Bartholomew from the Better Business Bureau says that was the red flag. He's got to pay money up front, in this case, a little over $4,000 uh, to make this transaction happen. Money's going the wrong way. If somebody's buying something of yours, you should be getting the money. <laughs> Not the other way around. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission warned in 2020 scammers making unsolicited contact with owners of timeshare properties are making their timeshare scheme appear legitimate using official looking documents and designing convincing websites. In Nickerson's case, the documents started coming in fast and furious. First, a purchase letter of intent from the broker. Next, a temporary tax ID. Then instructions for the wire transfer to the financial company, but it was sprinkled with faulty grammar and punctuation. I called all the businesses involved. Twice, I had to leave a message, and the phone number for the financial company led to a voicemail in a different language. I also called the leasing office of the listed address for that financial company on 33rd Street in New York City. They said the company shown on the letterhead was not actually a tenant. Nickerson says things got especially fishy after he received an email, supposedly from his timeshare company, and it had some blatant typos. Nickerson stopped just short of authorizing the money. Bottom line, the SEC says trust your instincts, and if something doesn't seem right, stop communicating with the company. They warn that it's very difficult to recover money wired abroad. We have several sources on how you can find out if an offer for an investment product or service is legitimate. Just visit our website, WCNC.com. In studio, Jane Monreal, WCNC Charlotte.